<laughs> Look how quickly they've ascended, ascended to the top, Blake Tanner. Oh, he knew. He knew. Wait, what? Why is she? Oh, no. Why is she better than her? Oh, it's um, it's because God hates you when you interrupt uh, me talking with starting the show. I'm sorry. I'm I'm very interested to hear about your good beer drinking story, but we've got to do three episodes tonight, and I've already started drinking, so we are on a timer. Wait. <laughs> wait. Wait. What? You just got to go all in on this. I don't even remember the build for this. This very much affects my uh this affects my pay-per-view planning, I think. What the fuck? Okay. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you two are... Fight forever! Da, da, clap, da, clap, da, da, clap, clap, Uh, I mean, who... It, Ayana's gotta win, unless... If Ayana loses tonight on the most, like, throwaway shit... I'm gonna be mad. Well, no, no, I did research recently. Ayana, other than one eight-woman match, has never been pinned... Or submitted in competition. I think the only reason Ultimate Karen is better than her in the ranking is because Karen has had more matches. Do you want to say who actually pinned Diana in that eight woman match? It was my wife. <laughs> my wife. We can chalk that bad boy up to nepotism. Next. Uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Wait, why is this a potential rivalry? <laughs> <laughs> this is something I never knew that I wanted. Keep it going. This is no, this is because Mega Ran made the hit song Fighters for Fighter Fest last year, and I'm gonna say Cody was the one who made the call to do the instrumental, not Mega Ran's rapped version. So I think this is all over the song Fighters, which is of course the theme song to Fight Boys, where we play it without the instrumental, Cody! We go hard. Uh, hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, they've fought before, but I don't know why this this deserves the main event spot. Also, um, I am gonna say Cody versus Megaran. The winner is going to be in the triple threat match that Hangman Page is going to be having at. J JXT money bags, meaning that it, we could see Cody versus Hangman start the show. <laughs> oh, baby. It's been, it's literally been two weeks since we've been back here, Blake. We don't remember anything. It's probably worse because we've been drinking. Um, a matter of fact, I haven't stopped drinking, so. <laughs> <laughs> in those, in that two week period, yes. It's, I knew I'd have to see this intro again, damn it. Okay, what? What happened? Because I've already got tentatively penciled in these two at the pay per view for the title. What happens if Papa Bliss wins? Is that just the rematch or? Um. I hate to fuck it up for Papa Bliss. <laughs> yeah. Because I love Papa Bliss too much. So maybe we just give it to him. Man, oh, it's a cage match too. Neat. I, I like that we both just stopped looking at the stipulation, huh? Yeah. Uh, oh, damn! Big running knee from Kenny Omega. Kenny is definitely putting some work in right now against Papa Bliss. I will. I do kind of want to go back to one of your running theories, which is that even if it is a title match, because it's on the this show and it's not on a pay per view, nothing's gonna happen. Yes, I I am fully aware that the game understands that title matches on TV rarely change titles. So I feel like Kenny's got the edge coming in on this match. Yes, exactly. I will say, I damn, just a big knee from Kenny. And then 
Damn, Kenny Gutbuster. I, I do want to say this, and this is why I'm so proud of Papa Bliss. Because Papa Bliss has always been a favorite boy. Big running knee. Papa Bliss has always been a favorite boy of ours. But we've never gave him that Jebaduk push. We've never gone hard in the paint on Papa Bliss. Meaning that I love this because this is one of our natural boys earning it. Like, Papa Bliss has earned this. Exactly. Like, I... As a matter of fact, I think when we fucked with this feud, we actually did it to Papa Bliss's detriment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Pop Papa whipping Kenny into the corner. Big double knees to Kenneth Omega. Papa Bliss not looking to be done though as he picks him up. Massive, beautiful combination. Damn, Papa Bliss. Elbow kick, dead. Oh, but Kenny right back with the jawbreaker. I will say, if we were WWE, oh, no, He's going to hit him with the, <laughs> with the Styles Clash. The, the, the Kenny Clash, yeah. But, no, I will say this. If we were WWE, we could build this as, like, the knee strike versus knee strike. Because, of course, Kenny is known for the V-Trigger. But Papa Bliss has that sexy Papa knee that he has taken down so many competitors with in the past. Uh, that is true. Oh, no! Oh, no! It's so early, Kenny! Kenny, it's so early! We're just going with that. All right, Kenny, say bye-bye. <laughs> no. Wait, why is... D Kenny knows he can win this by pinfall, right? I don't... I think that... I think that depends on if the game knows it can win by pinfall. I think the game's no, forgotten. I've, I've definitely seen a pinfall victory in a cage match before, but Kenny wants to just cause more. I think Kenny knows the plans for the pay-per-view. Kenny is aware that at JXT Moneybags, he's going to have this exact same match again, and he's just trying to cause as much punishment as possible to pop a bliss. Oh, but Kenny is on top of that ding-dang. <laughs> oh, he's so far up, though. Papa Bliss is crawling. Oh, this is not how I wanted it to end. Oh, Now, hold oh. on. Kenny's... Oh, never mind. Never mind. Kenny's out. Kenny is out. Papa Bliss is just looking at him in the eyes, knowing he has nothing to do. Now... I know you're not a big fan of the stage or the steel cage match stipulation. I've cut a promo on this stipulation and where is Papa Bliss levitating? <laughs> I, I was just I was waiting for something to happen because it hung on Kenny celebrating for way too long. Oh, you were just waiting for like the denouement of the match, like Papa Bliss jumps off the cage at him. No, I know we're both not big fans of the steel cage match. I am as a content creator because I know for a fact that a steel cage match will only take like four minutes. <laughs> it is a very quick one. Okay, well at least at least our pay-per-view isn't fucked up. We still know we are going to have Kenneth Omega versus Papa Bliss at JXT Moneybags, but before we can get to Moneybags, Blake Tanner, Ultimate Karen is gonna try to put one over on our women's champion, Ayana, a woman who is yet to be pinned in anything. Spoiler alert, she doesn't. She- <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> I- Blake, I need Ayana to win for a very specific reason, because a very specific episode of Developmentally Unstable hasn't come out yet. Uh-oh. Oh, and no. That, that episode is predicated on a very specific thing, a very specific match happening with someone who may not have been pinned or defeated before. I will say there's some good fucking graps happening to start off, but Ayana, Ayana has already gone into kick territory. <laughs> Once Ayana turns on the kicks, it's hard to turn them off. Absolutely devastating kicks from the woman known as Ayana who picks up Ultimate Karen, whips her into the turnbuckle before delivering those vicious double knees. And I think this is a Falls Count Anywhere match, so we might just go buck wild. Or not. Yeah. <laughs> Ultimate Karen could just phase into the fucking arena again. I kind of... 
I, I wouldn't mind it because it, it would, we could just end the match at that point. Now, I will say, these two have had a Falls Count Anywhere match before, and Ayana was very successful in that match as well, but it looks like Ultimate Karen is trying to not give her that easy out. Whips her into the ropes. Ayana coming back like a house of fire, drops down, and then, oh my god, just sends her tumbling over. Ah, you know, this is fine. It's all, it's, oh, fuck. Okay, Ayana. Big arm drag for my... Oh, you, did you have something to say there to the women's champion? No, no, no. I, I was just like, I was encouraging Ayana. Oh, beautiful arm drag from the champ, but oh. Grabs the leg. Big leg whip from the number one contender, the ultimate Karen, who picks up Ayana, takes her towards those ropes. But oh, looks like she was going for the turnbuckle, but before she can do anything, Ayana with the big elbows. Whips her into the turnbuckle, though, once again, is the ultimate Karen. Whips Ayana across the ring before... Oh, went for the double knees, but Ayana grabs her beautiful suplex from the women's champion, showing why that gold is around her waist. You know, these two have shown time and time again that they are willing, like, when the time is right, to just go outside of the ring. I'm amazed that they've stayed inside the ring this long, honestly. That's right, Ayana, though, just trying to choke out the ultimate Karen, not putting the arm under the neck, though. Hmm, that's fine. Oh, but wait a minute, Ayana with the butt butt, sends her to the ground, goes for the early pin, one, two. I genuinely thought she had it. I was like, it's like, wow, wow, girl, wow, you didn't put up much of a fight there, did you, Karen? No, nope, but it's fine. Oh. <laughs> yeah, please, just just throw it together. What? She powered what? out? Karen? Karen? Oh, Karen's the first to take it to the outside, just punching her in that face. Takes her to the... Oh, no. Ultimate... Oh, no, the spine buster! Karen, please... Karen, please, please, Karen, Karen, please, Karen, Karen, Karen. I don't... Oh, no, and she's setting her up for the mini driver! Rolls her over into that pinfall. One, two, yeah! <laughs> Gonna wake up earlier in the morning than that to get fucking one over on the champ! Yep, and now the champ's gonna come back and kick your ass. Right, Ayana? Right? Well, I don't know. Rolls her into the ring. Ayana not looking to be in a good place as Ultimate Kara just chokes the life out of her. Oh, no. Ultimate Kara just bragging braggadociously to the crowd, not even hooking the leg for the cover, and it leads to her detriment. As Ayana kicks out of it, but ooh, just stomping on it. Ultimate Karen showing no respect to our women's champion. The only two-time women's champion in the history of the JXT women's title. Well, I don't think Karen, I don't think the word respect is in her dictionary. I don't, I don't think she understands what that word means. This is a woman who uh, ordered cakes, took selfies with them, and then sent them back because she didn't eat them. That's a very specific reference there, Blake. Dan. I saw a video of that exact same thing happening to somebody uh, earlier today, and the waiter shoved the cake in their faces. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! A second mini driver rolls her into the pinfall, hooks the leg, one, two! No! <laughs> That's my champ. That's my champ. Yeah, but champ's got to champ's got to hit something big. Champ's got to come back from this hardcore. Like Ayana is, she is rarely. Oh my god! What is this? <laughs> I don't know, but Ayana is rarely in a position like this where she is being completely controlled by the ultimate Karen right now. Picked up by the ultimate. Oh no. <laughs> picks her up, but no, unfortunately Ayana was playing to the crowd not usually a big thing that Ayana does, and it leads to her falling to the mat, just crawling to the ropes! Uh-oh. 
And now, what is... Oh no, is Ultimate Karen going to try? Oh no! Two, okay, kick out. Oh no, she just did the single shoulder kick out. Not even a real passionate kick out. I thought Karen was going for the cheating technique, but unfortunately not. As she picks up Ayana, just suplexing her across the ring. Ultimate Karen. No! A third spine buster! This is not looking good for the champ, huh? Two. Yo! Go, baby! Go, baby! You fight her! You kill her! Go, Ayana! Oh, no. Oh, no, Karen, don't do it. Oh, Karen, she's... Karen, don't do it! I'm... But, um... Oh, she's hooked the arms. I'm sorry, buddy. Mini driver! I'm... I'm... I'm gonna have to re-edit an episode uh, yeah. of developmental... I don't understand how she's done this. I don't know if there's any way that she can win, but I'm just impressed on- Oh! Get her! Get her! Get her, Ayana! <laughs> oh, and she is just snapping that arm! She's like, you are not about to spine bust me anymore. Fucking snapping your arm off. And <laughs> gets ready, gets her prepped. Butt butt from the champ falls into a pin. One! Two. <laughs> <laughs> we have the greatest champion of all time, Blake Tanner. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not mad about it, but that was a straight up Cena le level comeback. <laughs> they had us in the first half, Cotton. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. <laughs> Holy shit, we've got the best champion of all time. <laughs> Holy shit, Ayana. Ayana, I'm not even- I'm not halfway through this drink, Ayana. You can't put me through that kind of fucking- That shit, oh my god. I know, that- That was rough, man. That was comeback of the century, oh fuck. I don't know, I don't know between these two teams for this. I, you know, Gods on Parade has shown, like, their resiliency against, um, what's their fucking name again? Phantoms of Pain. Think, um, think, uh, Hideo Kojima. That's all you need to remember. <laughs> their fucking name. <laughs> Alright, we've had a fairly... Damn! Damn, son! God's on parade rushed in like a house of fire, Blake Tanner. Oh, these boys, this is what I love about them. Their tenacity, their endless ability to try and just be the best gods they can be. And then... I, I, w I will say, <laughs> uh, old phantoms of pain have taken control. Although, there we go. Zeus Hellman with a beautiful suplex. Going after Odin Dedson as Valcor Falcor is just like, I'm gonna take this table, I'm gonna fuck some people up. You know what? This match needs a little T. Soon after, a little L, and there's some C. I was fixing to say, Odin's got the L, but oh, uh, Zeus Helmet grabbing the uh, L from him. I have been playing God of War recently, and man, that's really changed how I feel about this match. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna take we're gonna take some quick bets right now. Does someone go through the table or does the table just get like thrown down? Oh wait a minute! Oh no! I'm no Falcor. We didn't even have time to make that bet. Korlov, the it's destroyer, good... or whatever. I was gonna I was gonna put a stake on the line for the next time we hang out. I'm very happy I didn't. What was it gonna be? No stakes. That was the stake. The be the stakes of the bet stakes were stakes. stakes. Gotcha, gotcha. As you say, oh. as I have another Omaha steak ad blaring me in the face on my other monitor. <laughs> what? Um. Okay, Odin floated for a few there for some reason. Don't know why. Falcor 
does have the briefcase. And Korloff, ah, uh, Korloff finally grabbing the ladder. Odin, though, Odin in play, or I'm sorry, Zeus. I'm getting my gods messed up. Beautiful, Falcor, dude, you've had hours. Falcor, you've got so much fucking time. Zeus Hellman, MV fucking P. Yeah, they did it. Zeus we have, Hellman, y'all. We have... <laughs> We have taken a match that is in, like probably the most exciting match in WWE history. There's an invisible Zeus helmet in there. <laughs> We've taken the most exciting match and quite possibly we made the most boring version of it in history. Uh, but it was a quick match though. It was a very quick match. I don't know why Zeus is invisible. It's okay. Always been invisible, Scotty. What are you talking about? <laughs> that, that pushed him down. They're only second in the rankings. I mean, they're still gonna get a match at the pay-per-view because I'm a fucking good booker, but like... <laughs> but still. Oh, and now the match to determine one of the men who will be facing Hangman Page at Moneybags as Cody takes on Mega Ran and... We're rooting for Ran, right? Like, you can't not root for Ran. Yeah, it would really be hard to... I mean... You gotta root for the person who gave you permission to use his song, kind of. Boy's got a new album out. We gotta support this motherfucker. Go buy it on Spotify. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put a fucking. I don't know. <laughs> I said buy on Spotify though. <laughs> That's not how Spotify <laughs> works. <laughs> All right, Mega Ran, teach this fucking Atlanta boy how it's done in Arizona. Man. Damn it, Ran, you've already been bagged up in the corner. Tommy's being forced to call for the separation. Uh, you know that this is Cody's uh, technical prowess coming out. Uh, Mega Ran is more of a power player. Cody Cody tries to uh, control his opponents. Now it looks like he is doing that right now. Mega Ran getting in little to no offense against the roller coaster there. Hmm. Excellent commentary from Blake Tanner, who I'm just just judging from looking at your screen, is looking at that Omaha Steaks ad a little too violently. There's some good fucking shit on Omaha Steaks right now, and this is your fault for bringing steaks up earlier. I mean, not not this weekend, but next weekend. You know your boy's coming up there. I'm a message. Some, I'm a I'm a message all of our friends who are always like, no, I can't hang out tonight. I'm gonna message them today and be like, look, you have no choice. <laughs> oh, that'll be good because I'm gonna be moving all um that weekend. So y'all can fucking help. How about that, Mega Ran? No, no. <laughs> Come help, Ran. No, um, I'm not. See, here's the thing. I'm, I'm sure you'll be moving to like six at night. And that's about the time old Scotty Moore is going to show up at your front door there. And you will not be allowed inside. <laughs> Do you want to hang out on my front porch? That's all you're getting. All right. Rand being picked up once again by Cody, who sends him unceremoniously into the ring. And then, oh no, beautiful DDT, which I know is Cody's signature because Cody has a generic moveset because I guess whoever made this call was like, hey, fuck it. Oh, well, <laughs> just gonna. Takes him down with the Falcon arrow and Blake, you know what that means. Unfortunately for Rand. Can't kick one, out. Two. Oh, what? Nobody kicks out of the doop a doop a fucking arrow. Doop a doop a doop a doop a doop a doop a good twist on that, though. All right, but Rand sends Cody into the corner before nailing him with the... Oh, there we go, the back punch. <laughs> the vicious back punch. Uh, it's a... It, they call it the spinal nap. The spinal nap! <laughs> And then a beautiful power bomb from Rand sends Cody to the ground, <laughs> picks him back up, and then DDTs him into the mat. 
And Blake, you know what that means. Ram picks up Cody, but unfortunately Cody sweeps the leg before picking up the master of hip hop, the master of nerdcore, who picks up Cody. Oh no, they have the exact same moveset, Falcon fucking air. <laughs> We're gonna have to do something about that. <laughs> One, two. Oh, Cody kicks out it too, because they have the same fucking <laughs> moveset. They, they scouted each other perfectly. Yeah. It feel bad, because like, I gave Ran a custom moveset, but I guess it just didn't... It didn't translate into this universe. Leg DDT. <laughs> Huh. And then Cody went for the elbow, ran reverses. Fucking, fucking RKO, I guess, from Mega Ran, who picks up Cody before leveling him with a second DDT. All right, what you gonna do, Ran? Runs him over. Hey, I believe you, he ran. what One, you gonna do? Hey, two, you, what you gonna do? Three. Yeah, yeah. Mega Ran did it. Ah, uh, that's him. That's gonna be your new champ. I was fixing that I do not care who wins the other the other person in this match because it's a three person match. I don't care who the other person that triple threat is. Mega Ran is fucking ready to go. Wait. Who's wait? Wait. Wait. I'd really love to know who the new person in this storyline is, but they're fucking invisible. He doesn't even tell it to what? So, who is this mystery man? We'll find out next week, but right now in our main event, it's Joey Janela versus. Gibbons. Okay, hold on. <laughs> no, Ch 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 Joe, you're gonna have to wait a minute. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Are you okay? No. Because <laughs> I'm not okay right now. I, I want to know who it was. Like, this is the biggest mystery right now. And it overshadows everything about this match right now. I Which is upsetting, because these two have had fucking quality matches in the past. Oh yeah, and they've already they're already showing up. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Stomping on his face, old Joey Joe Joe for Janella. <laughs> John Jacob Jingleheimer Janella. Oh man. W D Dylan sent that to us, right? The fucking clip from PWG. <laughs> yes. It's so good. <laughs> And, and I love I I didn't even I, I didn't see it when Dylan sent it, but I knew exactly what you were talking about. Yes! Early pinfall attempt from Janela Gibbons with a quick kick out of that. And wow, Gibbons was like, uh Gibbons was not happy about that. But like Gibbons was very upset that I, I guess it would be the fact that Joey thought he could get one over. On on Gibbons that early. Um, because he's dumb. Don't talk about Joe. Don't talk about Joe for it that way. We once saw him at a GCW show while very fucking drunk. We also saw him in Vegas, very fucking hungover. Yep. No, we saw him both drunk and hungover, one of them, while wearing Road Warrior Animal's shoulder pads. He just fucking stole them for the night. Oh, that's one of my favorite wrestling memories. Mine is, um, and I it has literally nothing to do with wrestling, other than the fact that we were at the after party for Double or Nothing. But mine is when Ron Funches came into the party wearing a Ric Flair fucking, like... It's like a custom track jacket that was Ric Flair's, like, robe. And I walked up to him very drunk, and I said, Hey, man, you're the reason why I love RuPaul's Drag Race. My wife says it's a problem. He goes, it ain't no problem if you love it. <laughs> and then laughed, and I was like, I 
Love you, Ron Funches. All right. Oh, no. Joey is not in a good place as he gets slammed with the Olympic slam. Goes for the pinfall. One, two. Ooh, Joey barely kicking out. I, I have one regret from that party since this is now just a podcast we're doing. It's the fact that I didn't talk to Kevin Condren because I didn't, A, because he was having a good time with Killer Cross and Scarlet Bordeaux and I was very nervous to walk up to them, but also because I didn't realize he was Jervis Cottonbelt. I didn't, and hold Wait, on. Wait, you didn't know that? No. At the time of the double or nothing after party and um, kayfabe breaking, I was not aware that the performer behind Gentleman Jervis was Kevin Condren. And we had talked to Jervis about coming on our live show and I could have easily walked up and be like, hey man, do you want to do the show tomorrow? Let's go. But no, <laughs> I was a nervous little punk boy who didn't want to talk to nobody. You know what they even like worst thing is, I mean, he's a, uh, I think he's still a moderator. He used to be a moderator of the best, of the the only wrestling subreddit that's worth a damn. He is the, he is the god of r slash, is it reddit? Is that what it, a w-r-e-d-d-t-i-t? Um, I think red, I think that's one of the wrestling subs. He's, uh, he was a mod of the squared circle sub for a while, which was the big that's one. That's what I was yeah. thinking of. Well, because I, I remember grabbing you drunkenly and being like, Hi, Blake. You see that guy over there? That's the biggest mod on the big... Because, like, he did shit with Shakara for a while, and that's all I knew him from. I didn't realize he was Jervis. And so all I, all I thought he was doing at the time was being a mod on Squared Circle. So I was like, that's who that is. Man, if you're listening, Condren, like... For all the shit you have to put up with moderating that subreddit, fucking props. I mean, no, no, no. He works for Chikara. For all the shit you put up <laughs> with Chikara. And oh, wait, Joey's cheating. Two. Oh, kick out because that never, never worked. I was works. just about to fucking say, I don't ever remember that working. Tommy. Tommy's. Hold on. Tommy. No, no, no. Wait, is Joey just taking off all... We'll find out in a minute, but what... So Joey runs, hits a, a heel kick. Uh-huh. Tommy... <laughs> Tommy trips on Gibbon's leg. <laughs> That's what it is, because there's nothing touching him. There's nothing fucking touching Dude, him. He just trips. <laughs> oh, no. He's grabbing his. Well, he grabs his head as if Joey hit him in some way. What the fuck? Tommy, I am not. We do not pay you for this fucking TNA level ref sellage. Also, I want. I, I know we want this match to be over because then this could be a contender for fastest episode of JXT ever. But also, I want this match to keep going until Joey Janela has somehow managed to get the fucking turnbuckle off of every single one of those corners. <laughs> That's actually his goal in this match right now. It's like that fucking uh, Rusev John Cena four corners match. Yep. What the fuck was that match called? Was it just like a corners match? Turnbuckle? No, it wasn't a corners match. It was a, um... It, it was a chain match, but I think there was something, like, Russian about it. Because I don't think it was just called, like, a chain match. But the point of a chain match in certain ones... One, two, kick out, thank you. The point of it is you're connected to your opponent and you have to touch all four turnbuckles in succession before they can stop you. So you have to drag your opponent around the ring. Oh, wait, hold on. We may have a... <laughs> <laughs> Tommy! Fucking priorities, One, Tommy! Two! T Damn it, Tommy! You let Joey Janela get out of that. Um, but no, the point of it is that you have to touch all four turnbuckles before anything big can happen. Like, you know, that's how you win the match. But there are some matches like Roddy Piper versus, ah, fuck, I can't remember who it was. He had a strap match against somebody and it was 
fucking phenomenal because you didn't worry about touching the four turnbuckles. It was just beat the shit out of each other. I know. I remember seeing. Um, was it Greg Valentine? I don't think it was Greg Valentine. Uh, there was another spot because El Generico and Kevin Steen had a very, very good match. And it was a strap match. And at one point, Generico was on the top rope trying to just dive on Steen. And there's a table set up to the outside. Steen hooks him with the leather belt and just throws that motherfucker. Oh, Joey Janela win. That cool. Oh, yeah, That's good cool. job, Joey. Good job. I'm just looking them up right now. Like, okay. So... The 10 best strap matches in WWE history, uh, according to the sports. Hold on, don't, don't put in WWE history, because I feel like that. I think the Piper one was maybe. I can't remember where it was, but I don't think it was in WWE. Okay, it wasn't, uh, because. Although, number one was a uh, Caribbean strap match. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, it's so cool. Steve These Austin people and can't Savio hear. Vega. <laughs> Fucking, I love me some Savio Vega. These people came here to watch great commentary over this amazing match between these two great competitors. And I'll be honest, it was good. Joey Chanel's heel tactics led to his victory. But no, instead, he just gets to hear, they get to hear us talk about strap matches in the history of the WWE. Are we going to get another invisible run in? That would really just top this whole thing off for me. No, it's just going to be Joey Janela proving victorious. I don't think he's got anything he's doing at the pay-per-view, so I don't know why we gave him this big spot in the main event, given that... At the pay-per-view, Gibbons is in the fucking money bags match, but whatever. I'm looking. Uh, yeah, it is part of his contract. He has three of these where he can just be in the main event whenever he wants. <laughs> and we can't do shit about it. Well, I, I, here's what I think. I think we told him, hey, man, you're taking the L tonight to put over Gibbons. And he went into business for himself. But who knows? But uh, who knows what happens next between all of these competitors on the Go Home episode for JXT Moneybags. And you'll see that next time on JXT Pro Wrestling.